And if they don't have Christ, they have died and they have walked off into an eternity without having the life of God in their spirit. And they entered the second death. And when they enter the second death, the book of Revelation tells us that the second death is cast into the lake of fire. And the lake of fire is not a place, hear me, the lake of fire is not a place of annihilation. It's not, you're there, you burn, you're gone. Take your Bible, read it cover to cover. You come back and show me one verse, show me one. That says when people wind up in hell, it's an instantaneous destruction and their consciousness is over. You won't find it because it's not there. Jesus described a situation where there is a man who had been rich in his lifetime. He had not cared for other people's needs. He had lived away from God. And when he died, he found himself in a place of torment. And he did not get a note from God to say, this torment's going to be over in this long of a period of time. He said, well, why do you want to talk about something so horrible as that? All of us are going to stand before God. Some of us are going to stand before Him as His children. And we will be at the tendencies of Christ, not being evaluated for being saved or lost, but for how we served Him and the rewards that we have for our eternity. But most of the people on the planet, according to Jesus, remember the narrow road and the wide road? The wide road says that many people go down that road and that road is leading where? Destruction. These are the people that are counting on you. And they're counting on me to tell them a truth that they don't think they want to know. They don't think they want to know. But this grace is something that they're either going to be affixed to. Or they're going to spend eternity separated from God. John 3.16 tells us that for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him would not perish, but have everlasting life. But you go down below that, and it says that those who have not believed are condemned already because they have not believed. It's not that they're going to get to eternity and, and get condemned there. There are, forget all of the zombie shows on television, Everybody around you that does not yet have Christ as their Lord and Savior, they are walking around spiritually dead. Just like I was. And I did not do anything to deserve this life that I have been given. I have been affixed to this by the grace of God. And so, Jesus is coming. And as obedient children, notice we're talking about believers here. Believers are supposed to be what kind of children? Tell me. Obedient children. We're not obedient children. We may find God takes us by the hand and leads us around. We may have a situation where He disciplines us and He corrects us and He's at work in our life to try to get us where we need to be. Why? Oh, because He loves to embarrass us. He loves to make us suffer and to make us miserable. Is that right? What does the book of Hebrews tell us? That God disciplines His children for one reason. What is that reason? He disciplines us because of His love. Because He loves And so, as obedient children then we should not be conformed to the former lust. I've got a word former here. What do I do with it? That is the word that's talking about the things that were before I was born again. Before I came to Christ. Those were the former lust in the former life that I had. But that's not the life that I have now. The former lust, which were yours in ignorance. Now, I have the Word of God. Now, I have received Christ. Now, I have been saved. Now, He is changing me. If I go back into those old ways, 
I cannot claim ignorance. I may only confess to disobedience and ask not to be saved again because my, I have been affixed. But I can ask for forgiveness. I can ask to be cleansed. And I can do that knowing that I'm not talking to the judge of the universe anymore. But I'm speaking to my Heavenly Father. But I don't get away with anything. I can't pull anything over on him. You can pull it over on Papa. I, I can get all wrapped around, little, get wrapped around the little girl's finger, baby. You don't pull anything off on God because He loves you too much to let you go off into sin and suffer the consequences of it. So, we get away from those things that we lived in before we were saved. But, now, what's the change? But like the Holy One who called you, be holy. I know it says other things. Be holy yourselves. I want you to catch this phrase. Like the Holy One who called you, be holy. I've got news for you. When we talked about death being a kind of separation, holiness is the same thing. It's a kind of separation. Only this time, the separation is to be set apart. Now, you guys, y'all set things apart all the time. I see y'all in Walmart. And you walk over and you look at the bananas and, and you say, oh, no, no. I don't like, no, no. And then you find a set of bananas and you say, whoa, and you set them apart. What happens? You leave the rest of them in Walmart. These you put in your basket and you take them home. And God is set apart from everything in the universe. He is holy. There is nothing like Him. There will be never be anything like Him. He is a sinless, pure, holy God. He is set apart. And guess what? He is calling you to become His children. And when you say yes, He wants to take you and put you in His basket. And He doesn't want you to go back into the world. He doesn't want you to jump out of the basket and run back into Walmart and climb back up on the shelf. Back to your former lust. He wants you to live separate from the ungodliness and the sinfulness of the world. Some people would say, well, yeah. If I did that, people would give me a hard time. They'd probably think I wasn't any fun. You know, I want to ask you a question. Do you think, honestly, do you think, do you believe that if you had lived in Jesus' lifetime in this world, that hanging around with Him would have been boring? Do you, do you think Jesus was like, no fun, all serious. Would you, would you think that somebody who was willing to, to go and, and to mingle with people who were, who were you know, living in the world, uh, women who uh, were prostitutes, men who were drunks, guys who were uh, living against the whole uh, plan and purpose of their nation to be set apart, uh, and they were, uh, here they were, taking taxes from their own people and giving it to Rome. That, that he was willing to wade off into these things and to know these people and to tell them about the Father and to draw them to himself. That, that Jesus was somebody that people, they were not attracted to him at all. I don't believe it. I don't believe that for a second. I don't think that those masses of thousands and thousands of people that came to see Jesus came to see Him because they were expecting something boring. And so when God sets you apart, He doesn't set you apart to be boring. 
He sets you apart to be Christ-like. And what would be some evidence of that? Well, the fruit of the Spirit. Right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. You, you, on and on and go. You have all of these things that demonstrate what God is like. Look, I know God has a sense of humor because I'm looking at y'all. <laughs> and I look in the mirror. And <laughs> I know God has a sense of humor. So today, here we are. It's time to decide what God is wanting us to do with all this. Christian, is your mind so focused on the things of God that you're prepared for whatever comes next? I mean, if, if Israel goes after Iran today, and the price of oil goes to $10 a gallon, I mean, gas goes to ten dollars a gallon. And there's a financial crisis, and everything unwinds and comes apart. Are you going to be okay because your mind is fixed on him? Think about it. Are you inside going to be like a drunk, freaking out, running around, just like a crazy person trying to figure out what to do? Or are you going to be able to be sober within yourself to face even persecution when the government? decides that they're going to crack down on Christians because you just don't know about those people. Are you going to be able to be sober in spirit and trust in God? When that time comes, I promise you it's coming. I've read the book of Revelation. Have you? It's coming. Yeah. may not be the Christians that are in the world today in the church, but the tribulation saints. They're going to be losing heads left and right. And why would that start all of a sudden? Birth pains lead us to that kind of work in our years. More people have been martyred for their faith in Jesus in the last 100 years than in all previous Christian history all the way back to the time of Christ. Because there are more people and more Christians in the world. You're just not experiencing it because you haven't been living in a closed Muslim country. Or you haven't been living in, in Central Asia. Or you haven't been living in certain places in Central America or South America. You don't see it. It's not there, right? Get my head out of this hole. Where's your hope? Is your hope on your retirement account today? Brothers and sisters, is your hope in your health? Is your hope in your children or your grandchildren? Where is your hope? All those things are wonderful. I'm not condemning any of them. But your hope better be focused on Jesus. And the fact that He's coming back. Because if everything else unwinds, that's one thing we know for absolute certain. You're not a person whose mind is set for action. You're slower in your spirit. And your hope is fixed on Jesus. During this invitation, you need to talk to the Lord about that. But if you've never given your life to Christ, <coughs> those things don't matter. To you. Because in your spirit, you're disengaged from the life of God. Back there when you first started doing things that you knew were wrong. Until you come to Jesus and ask Him to forgive you of your sin and to make you a child of God. You repent of living your own way and give yourself to Christ. You'll not be engaged to life again. Once you are, it's eternal life. But until you do, if you leave this lifetime without having done this, you will be separated, according to Scripture, from God for all some people might say I'm mean for saying it. But I would tell you, I would be the most horrible, ungodly, unloving, and uncaring person if I didn't tell you. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking that you would bring us to the place we need to be in you. Lord, that we're your children and we're not obedient children, that you would help us to confess to you our disobedience now. 
that you would help us focus now on being affixed to your grace and your plan. Lord, for those who are realizing that they need you to have spiritual life, that they just need you for everything. That they would turn their thoughts right now toward you as they speak from their heart right now to you that you're smart enough to know that they're talking to you. That they would say, Father in heaven, I know that it's true. I'm not perfect. And heaven's perfect and I don't fit there. I can't compare myself to the world and think I'm a little better. And I'm going to be okay. This preacher is telling me from the Bible that you compare everybody to Jesus and He was perfect. So I'm asking you to forgive me for living my life my own way. And I want to stop doing that. Lord Jesus, I want you to come into my life and change me. Please make me a child of God. Bring me your life that I might have you in life forever with you. Lord, there may be other decisions, people who need to be saved. People, Lord God, who need to be a part of this church. They, you're calling them to be members. People that you may be calling to full-time Christian service. Lord, whatever it is that you're saying to us in our hearts all around this room as your spirit moves amongst us, help us to always say to you, the God of the universe, the one thing that smart people would say, help us to say, yes. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand at this time, if you would, and as we sing, as God has spoken to you, you pray to receive Christ. You come. As the deer panted for the 